Should anabolic steroid use be supervised? Is it ethical to do this at this point? It's so clear that after decades of understanding that people will use illicit anabolic steroids and other performance enhancing drugs, regardless of laws, regardless of regulations and cheating and things like this, people by the droves, by the millions, are using steroids more and more, unfortunately, and sometimes they're very young, which is sad. So this is never, ever medical advice. This is never my professional opinion, because in my medical practice, I don't do any of this. I'm super conservative, and I have to abide by the regulations as I'm a physician. Beyond that, I like to question and ponder things for you guys. People are suffering from drug use in the world. We know this for decades. And because of that, there are locations in the world, in Europe, in Canada, even in America, that have allowed supervised injection sites for illicit drug users, obviously heroin and opioids. And the data is very interesting. The data shows that it saves lives. Now, again, it's not a political statement. Some politicians on the far right, even right of center, are going to feel that's wrong. And I'm not getting involved in this. Obviously, if you're a medical expert like myself, you're obligated to care for people ethically, which sometimes gets you into tricky predicaments. We're not going into that today, guys. We're going to talk today about a blueprint forward, a progressive blueprint forward because men and women are utilizing steroids by the millions. It's not going to stop. I'm not talking about cheating in the NFL and MLB. These are people that are using steroids and they love it. They enjoy it. They're adults. They're not children. And they are getting hurt because they're not supervised by medical physicians. Is this the path word forward? Is it a blueprint? This is my blueprint. This is what I've constructed today for you. Is it ethical for supervision of anabolic androgenic steroid users? Is this ethical in the world today? Are we going to come to this point? Will this happen one day? If it does, if it does, and it helps people, this is the right thing to do. This would be a potential move forward as this is going to be medical information. So how would you do this? How are the governing bodies of the IFBB, strongman organizations, whatever organization is going to move forward with this progressively and provide information in some regular regulation or monitoring supervision for people that are using these drugs from a medical perspective. So this is it. I've put it together for you guys, and I've been talking about this in pieces, and even subsequently in the future, we talk about this. It's going to happen. It's, it's going to have to happen. So this is what the blueprint is going to look something like this. And this is for you. Do this for yourself, please. Women included, of course. Do it for yourself. So take notes here. Use all my information with your doctors, with your healthcare providers, because this is the digital future. You're going to take information. You're going to put it together yourself like you're doing, and you're going to move forward. You're going to use my information because I'm a legitimate board-certified internal medicine doctor. I'm obviously an expert internist, and I'm also an expert in protecting people and providing people that are on androgens, men, testosterone, ethically and medically. So this is what you have to understand. The history and physical exam starts first. Everything starts with an H&P. What's your medical history? What's your psychosocial history? Psych, psych, psych. 
If you have depression and anxiety, you're going to have to be careful because steroid use is absolutely going to affect you. You have to understand that. What medicines are you on? What allergies do you have? Family history. Family history. Do you have a history of coronary artery disease? This is the main thing why people die. It's hypercoagulable states. If it's on the arterial side, it's a, it's, a, a, it's a heart attack. If it's on the venous side, it's a DVT or pulmonary embolism. Of course, there's arrhythmias. There's the, the drugs we know that's used for cutting and electrolyte imbalances, the kidney, the electrolytes, and the death. More for women, I suspect, and for the diuretics and for the bodybuilders that are preparing. Different than strong men and powerlifters and the regular guy. It's a different thing. Coronary disease is the big one for most people in the end. Know your family history. Do you have an arrhythmia, Wolf Parkinson White? Do you have any long QT wave do you have any issues with septal disease? Do you have any hypertrophic cardiomyopathy in the family, the arrhythmias, hypercoagulable states? Do you have your mom or dad have, have, does your mom have a lot of, did she have an issue with a lot of miscarriages? Does she have blood clots in the legs, pulmonary embolisms? You have to understand these histories. You, no one's going to do it for you. You have to understand it yourself and bring it to a healthcare provider. DVTs, hypercoagulable states, heart disease, coronary artery disease, family history. That's the salient point. But a big a family history for psychiatric issues, for medical issues, common, rare, it's right there. Family history is that crystal ball. Vital signs is next. What's your blood pressure and heart rate? Before you go on any androgens and different PEDs, if you have hypertension and, and, and a irregular heart rate, it's going to be exacerbated. You need to know this physical exam. Oh, a, a detailed physical exam by an expert internal medicine doctor. That's going to be the top doc, an, a real internist that has a history of years of clinical experience, understanding how to really do a physical exam. Everything's digital now. I love the digital world. Here I am in my digital world for you guys. But you can get, you need to get that needs to come together where you walk into a facility and you need a physical exam. So that's a full physical exam. Next, in my opinion, 20 to 30 year olds, and when you look at the NCAA looking for just athletes, they recommend these things too. 20 to 30 year olds, ECG, electrocardiogram, 12 lead ECG, echocardiography, looking for the heart valves, the size of the heart, any arrhythmias. There we go again. Those are the, that's the stuff you hear when you athletes die young. Forget the drugs. Forget the steroids and the cocaine and these different things. These are the underlying abnormalities from a congenital sense that will put you at risk. If you're 30 and above, you need the ECG, 12 lead ECG, electrocardiogram. Echocardiography, it's a transthoracic echocardiogram. And then the corn, there's the coronary artery, a calcium score. I hear so many people doing coronary artery scores, it makes me so happy. But it's, it, it, it's, it's scary to me, and I'm concerned that if you're 21, you're doing a calcium score, and you get a zero, it better be zero when you're 21. It's gonna be, it better be zero when you're 31. But if it's not, and you're 35 or 30, and you have family history, your dad had a heart attack in his 50s or 60s or... I mean, even 40s, of course, the younger, the worse. And maybe he smoked and he had a few beers. I mean, you got to put it all together. You got to make sense of it. And it's, these are not dangerous tests. There's no radiation risk in a coronary artery calcium score, guys. It's not a CT angiogram. You have to understand the details and you have to be stern with your providers. If they don't know, they can watch my videos. What else? Physical exam vital signs, medical history, labs. This is the stuff everyone does, but what's the frequency? How does it save lives? You need to be actionable. There needs to be actions based on you and your fingerprint, based on your family history, your history, and all this information here from the physical, from the vitals, and what you found on these very important studies that should be done for baseline 
CBC, that's the C, complete blood cell count. You can see all my videos on this. And there's the iron studies in the ferritin. You see, if you're a man and you have any genes, European ancestry, for red blood cell production, you're going to potentially increase your ferritin. And the CBC, we all know, goes up that hemoglobin and that hematocrit go up. If you have genes for hereditary hemochromatosis, you don't need to do the gene studies, guys. You want to do it, go for it, but you don't need it. When you see this stuff on androgens, not just the CBC, but you have to coordinate it with the iron studies, IS. Transferrin saturation, total iron, there's going to be carrying globulins, and the ferritin, that's the big money. This is hematology right here, right? There's a little cardiology, hematology, this is a nephrology, it's the kidney, comprehensive metabolic with the glucose. This is the kidney and liver function. Very important. I always throw an A1C in because I'm a, I used to be a primary care doctor. I mean, how many guys out there like you that are in your 20s, 30s, or 40s that are pre-diabetic already? Well, if you're older, depending on your genetics and how, what your belly is and <laughs> what you're looking like and what you eat, you may be pre-diabetic. If you're going to take insulin, which I'm completely against any of this, extreme stuff. I'm just an old school guy that did a little steroids and I just don't want to have a heart attack. That's where I come from. So you want to do the A1C, but that's the kidney and liver right there. Comprehensive meta. So statin C. Again, the future is going to be you guys understanding things and bringing it to a doctor. Educated consumer is going to be the best, but you're not going to be a doctor. These are the specialists I'm going to talk about in the end. So, but you, when you really, really get into this, not to mention with YouTube, with other experts and that are appropriate explaining things. Hey, you're an educated person. So statin C, teasing out. Do you really have an elevated, falsely elevated creatinine? Because you're taking creatine, which is cringy. If a doctor doesn't know that, you're taking creatine in a sports supplement. It's going to increase the damn test. So therefore, it's going to look like an inversely a problem with the estimated GFR, and maybe the guy says, hey, you have kidney disease when you don't, but maybe if you do, and also muscles interfere too. That's why that statin C is very, very important, and you could bring that to your doctor, and your doctor may make a decision, or your doctor may refer you to nephrology. I can't tell you how many of you guys come to me uh, without your analysis and without these things done, and it turns out you already have the early stages of focal segmental glomerular sclerosis, FSGS. And it's sad because it's going to limit your life. It's going to limit your life. It may not be in dialysis. It's going to limit your life. And it's going to be a problem with your kidneys because of the steroid use, because of the hypertension, because of your, your excessive protein, the non-steroidals, the steroids. It all comes together. You get older, everything breaks anyway. This, this body is is it's pristine as you get older things rust they get older they break you have to understand that if you're doing steroids when you're north of 40 50 even 50 60 70 you have to understand this stuff young guys can do there's so much threshold the body has enormous threshold look at bodybuilders look what they do most of them are fine you're going to pay for it though be very careful keep everything down Lipids, there's the heart, lipids, urinalysis, look for protein. And of course, you want to understand the baseline. You want to understand your baseline for all these things. Start in the beginning, get a great workup. Here it is, you're going to do it yourself. Every four to six months is smart. Guys will, will, will notoriously do labs, maybe when they're on a full cycle in the end or the middle. And of course, your liver enzymes and your, your kidney could look, you know, because your muscles are up and you're dehydrated. It, it, it's not that it's useless, but what are you going to do about it? Stop the steroids, come off it. Your body cleans up because you're young. It goes back. The body has all this incredible threshold. But if you stretch the band, you stretch the band, you stretch the band, you know that on a molecular microscopic aspect, it's the molecules are breaking. Your, your kidney and your liver, your, your heart, really your heart and, and your kidney are stressed and you're taking years off of it. That's how, how you, you got to look at it. When you put it all together, guys, the ABCDs, again, I have so many videos on this, hemoglobin A1C, and that's just for guys that, that are in their late 30s and 40s and getting older and want to have perfect A1C. 
B is blood pressure. That's mandatory. That's the blood pressure. That's going to be huge. C is the cardiac, the calcium score, all the stuff right here, right? So echo, calcium, calcium score. Again, don't do it if you're 20-something. You do it in your 30s and based on your family history, put it all together. The D is deposition disease. That's that CBC in the red blood cells. And the S is, is to me, is sex, uh, serotonin, depression. There's the psychiatric issues right there. And then, you know, when, when you work on this stuff and it's reasonable and you're understanding it yourself, you use your specialists. They're there for you. The young guys are being trained. And this is all internal medicine, by the way. You know, if you need orthopedic surgeons because your shoulder, they're, there are surgeons. I'm not a surgeon and they don't do this. It's a whole world now of this, right? Use your specialist. Internal medicine is the chief. That's what I, I'm an internal medicine doctor. Not many guys train like me anymore. They're either working in hospitals, they're academic, or they're specialized. So internal medicine, that's the chief right there. You want an internist right there. Cardiology, these are all internal medicine doctors. Cardiology is a heart doctor. This is a kidney doctor, nephrology. I'm amazed how many people don't know this stuff. Endocrinology is the hormone doc. You know, but but if you really understand, this is gonna this is so far beyond endocrinology. Endocrinology guys are busy with obesity and diabetes. Let's be really honest about that. You can't know everything. Anyone that thinks that they can do diabetes, obesity, thyroid, osteoporosis for women, Cushing's disease, uh, rare and issues with the endocrine system, no way. No way. This is andrology, testosteronology, whatever the hell you want to call it. This is steroid. This is very complicated internal medicine. That's it, guys. Whew, I, you know I always get worked up because I just love you guys so much. And when I see you guys out in the gyms because I'm out there more and more, it, it tickles me. It, it just makes me think that I created this so long ago and it's building and building and this has to be a culmination. This is the blueprint forward. It's up to you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let's get some comments. I want millions of comments. Share this with everyone you know that's using steroids or considering using steroids. And let's understand that we need to be truly progressive. Forget the political aspect of progressive. That's not, to me, it's not real. Let's really be progressive, loving and caring so we limit suffering and we move forward. And if you're going to do these drugs against my advice, against medical information, it's just something that you have to understand. And in the end, this is the future understanding things yourself. Thank you so much. I really hope this helps everyone.